Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Eileen with Unique Gifts and Decor by Lady Di. Happy Wednesday again to everybody. It's still Wednesday, you guys. It's still hump day. It's almost over. It's about, um, about 11.25 here in North Carolina p.m., okay? So um, I just want to come back on to do this second request that I got from one of my subscribers today. Uh, when I uploaded this video um, earlier, the ones about the Easter baskets that I got from the um, Walmart sale. Um, she wanted a coffee basket um, or tea basket, maybe combination, to see what I can come up with. So, y'all know, I hope I did a little bit, give it a little justice when she asked me, okay? So, let's start with this. This is a iced coffee um, maker that I got at Ollie's during Christmas. Um, at Ollie's, they had that big sale one night. I think it was December the 7th or the 11th. Anyway, it was on a Sunday evening from 7 up until, I think it was 10, 11 o'clock at night. So, everything was like 25% um, off your total um, purchases in the store. So, um... I was just walking around and I saw these iced coffee makers. Now they had it in the black, the white, and the um, brown. It was only nine dollars and ninety nine cent at the time, so I just bought two. Um, I put them. I did baskets for Christmas and um, I sold those. So kind of went back. I thought, well, maybe these are just for the holiday, but they still had some of these in the store, you guys. So I think I have five left. Okay. <laughs> But um, I don't drink coffee, um, so I thought maybe people drink iced coffee or they can, you can make your own or you'd rather go to Starbucks, whatever. But this is just a cute machine that um, it can be used for um, somebody that just like coffee or maybe a housewarming gift as well. So um, I am in my box, you guys. I'm saving my box. When I tell you guys... When you get things like this, save your box because you might need to um, this box for something else. And what I probably could do is kind of um, wrap it and maybe put some items on top of that, or maybe um, seal the side and cut the cut this cut the middle out of something and make um, make this a box uh, gift and just put put my items down in here or even just put them on top, you know. But if you got boxes, save them, okay. So here is the one that I'm going to use, the brown one here. So I've taken it out the box here, and it has the cup to go with it. I've attached the instructions and the cord. I've taped them to the back of the um, item. Um, I am going to use these uh, Jimmy Jim Beam coffee uh, that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've got some green tea that I got from the Dollar Tree. So these are Dollar Tree items, you guys. Danish butter cookies. Um, they can go with coffee or tea. Um, I got these from the Dollar, Drop Dollar Tree as well. Um, this vanilla flavoring, it says it's sugar-free. Um, I got this from the Dollar Tree as well. And they did have the um, Harry and David um, vanilla cream brulee. Um, these were the single uh, cup. This is the medium roast. So I've got some the old school coffee and we got the key cups, okay? Now these, um, I've got some measuring cups that I got from um, the Dollar Tree as well. So they can measure the syrup or they can measure the coffee, okay? Now and I've got these mugs. It says... Um, Live simply. Um, and it's got a coffee in the, on the front of them. I got two of those. I'm not sure where I got those. They might have been um, Dollar General, maybe Dollar Tree. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> See, when you have stuff and it's just sitting there, you don't even know where you purchased it from. So I did get these um, dish towels and it's two of them to a pack these was four dollars originally at the dollar uh general didn't pay uh, four dollars for them but they're two so one's um a stripe and the other one has a, a solid with the coffee is a hug in the mug okay so what we're going to put all these items in this wicker basket that i got 
Now, there's two more items on here that I've already put together here. But this is a coffee bar sign that I got from the Dollar General. Um, I think it was the uh, green dot as well. Now, I also have a cutting board here on the back, which is turned this way. These also came from the Dollar, um, it says a cheese board, excuse me, set. And it comes from the Dollar Tree, but it has five, it was on the $5 aisle. Um, and these came, were doing um, fall. So if you got a chance to get some of those, um, that would be wonderful. But I thought this would be kind of cute where you can cut up some fruit for breakfast or whatever, you know, with your coffee or if you want to. Um, iced coffee snack in the afternoon. You can get cut up some cheese or whatever. You know, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't know what people do, okay? But we're gonna put this together right quick here. So I have put the um, cheese board down in the basket. And this basket I got from the Dollar General as well. I just put some uh, contract, pa con contract paper inside there and put some pink, uh, tissue paper. Now this is the gift, uh, the bag I'm going to use. It is a shrink wrap bag. It's, it's kind of large, so I'm going to go ahead and put the bag, mess it in the bag. bill from there. And I just put some tape on the back of the box so the sign can't, you wonder why I got the house sitting up here. It's just tape that I put on the back of the cheese board. So now we're going to take the coffee maker, um, the iced coffee maker, and we're going to put it on this side here as well but before we do that I'm going to put this on this side I'm going to take my towels and I want them to kind of lay down like this so in the front you can see the emblem of the towel of the um, coffee mug on the towel I'm trying to turn this bag around a little bit this is a large bag so and it makes it shrink well. So then I'm gonna put the coffee maker back on top on this side here. And I'm going to take my um, green tea and have it standing up like this. I am going to take my um, these key the key cups, we're gonna put that right beside there. And I'm gonna take the vanilla and put it right beside there. So I am going to get some tape and put across here so these three can kind of stay together where they won't be doing any leaning. So next I'm going to take my mug and I'm just gonna lay it like this I'm not gonna sit it up or anything like that. I'm just gonna lay it down. And I'm gonna take the other one and do it the same way. Like that, okay. And I am going to take my coffee. I thought I had something else. Did I have something else? Oh yeah, I did. So we're going to, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I'm going to take my cookies and put them right here. Let's see. Um, and then I'm going to take my coffee and I'm going to slide it inside of the cup. Put the um, measuring cups inside of the other cup. Or maybe I should, let me see how this works. If I could do it like that. Oh, maybe like that. 
I like that. Okay, yeah, that looks a little more neater, okay? So I've got some of this brown shred that we're just going to fill in a little bit here to cover up the pink um, tissue paper. So even though um, I've got my roses that I'm going to put here, I've got a light rose and a kind of fuchsia rose, pink roses to put beside there. And I'm going to get me some glue dots so I can make sure that stays in place. And you can just glue it right onto the cup, give it a little stability there. And you want to make sure your shred is really inside the basket. And you can go around the basket and see if there's any other places that you need to add some shred to cover up the tissue paper. So this is how I was looking so far, you guys. And I've got to put some shred back here. And that's it, you guys. Very simple. Um, now, if you don't have the coffee uh, maker, um, you could put something else in its place. Or if not, um, you can just kind of rearrange your um, basket um, a little to uh, take this out and put something else in there. Um, maybe some... Um... Oh, God, what else should you put in here? Um, maybe you could put a candle, um, definitely. And maybe... Um a spoon rest or something like that, you know, where they can, um, I don't know, some things for the kitchen, guys, okay? So we're just going to um, wrap this up right quick here. sure that you um, take down the sides. Make sure all the air is out the bag as well. The big bag, so it might take a minute so I can basically make sure it's all shrink real good. I'm using the bags that I have. You guys, I haven't bought any new ones. Um, I keep buying bags and I still have old ones that I need to get rid of first. So let's see if we can shrink wrap this real quick here. You have to hold your items in place if this is a big item like this.
And I don't want to put it on high, y'all, because if I put it on high, I definitely will burn my bag. Feels real good here. I'm gonna work on this part here. Pop it up right quick. Okay. So we got this done so far, and I'm going to put my bow to kind of cover this because I think the bag is kind of big and it's kind of nothing to hold to, to grab, grab it right here. So we're just going to fix it with my bow here in just a minute. So... The um, ribbon that I'm going to use, I've got three here. I got this ribbon from um, Michael's during the Christmas. No, I'm sorry, it says at home. I'm sorry. At home during Christmas. And I've got this one from Sam's. And I've got the pink one from Sam's as well. So we're just going to kind of make this bow real quick here, you guys. And while I got your attention, I hope I got your attention. I know it took a little long for that to wrap. But um, I haven't given any, well, I, I think I've kind of said some inspirational words through my videos. But, you know, usually on Sunday when I watch Dale Bronner, I come back with a uh, heavy word because he just kind of relates everything in a simplified manner. But he was talking Sunday and it was, the his his message was the great deliverer. So, um... He was coming from Job, Job the 5th chapter, 17 through the 19th chapter. And he was talking about, um, it's a blessing if God corrects you because the Lord chastised those he loved. Sometimes we're trying to figure out, well, Lord, why is this happening to me and this and that? Because it's not, sometimes it's not things that you've done wrong. It, and then sometimes it could be wrong decisions that we make. But sometimes he just, he's, um, he's, he says no, or he stops things because he loves us, because he just don't want us to get in a worse situation than what we might be already in. And he also said there is life beyond what the devil has done in your life. Um, there is life beyond your adversities, your bondage, um, your addictions, your disasters, life be, uh, beyond divorce, sicknesses. Um, your failures, your guilt. There is life after those things, you guys. Um, and he also says, God has a plan. God will protect you from harm no matter how often trouble may strike you. And and then he was talking about, here's the pink that I'm going to use, you guys. He was also talking about the big picture, which we've talked about the big picture. Um, the big picture is not what we're seeing right now. The big picture is what we what was down the road for us. Now, it might be quicker for some people than uh, some of us, but 
sometimes we need to stop looking at what's in front of us and focus on the big picture. So he's saying the big picture is you have to trust God. God says what you thought was going to take you out was really just setting you up. Sometimes we think these adversities we go through is like, it's, it's, it was here to take me out, but God is setting you up for something bigger and better. And it said, he said, God never ends on a negative. So all is well in the end. It's good because it's, it's positive. But if not all is well, then it's not the end. So what he's saying, basically, if whatever you're going through and it's, it turned out great, good. That's something positive because God will not end anything on a negative. But if it did not turn out good, then don't fret because he's not finished with you yet. Okay? So let's not get it twisted, okay? Um, so he says, so God is working on something. So he says he encouraged us to... Refuse to die in the place that you are destined to be delivered. Refuse to die in the place that you are destined to be delivered. So whatever you're going through, count it all joy, okay? Because you're not there to die. You're just going through it to get to your destination. And he also says when you are dis delusioned or off course... There's three things that you need. First, the thing he said, well, you need direction. So what does direction ask? So the question is, in seeking direction, which way should I go? Which way should I move? And it also says you can never get stuck unless you stop. If you feel like you're stuck, you, you stop, okay? But he all, let me read it again. You can never get stuck unless you stop. So while you're continually moving on, you can't get stuck because you, you, you're still moving, okay? Now, when you don't know which way to move, then you get paralyzed. And that happens to so many of us pretty often. And also, he said, distraction is the, in, is the enemy of direction. So you can get distracted um, by anything. He says, so if the devil really wants to get you, all he has to do is distract you. Then you will lose all your sense of direction. That means from a distract, if you're on a, if you're on a course or you focus on something, your phone will ring or something come up on television or you're getting distracted, you're getting off focus on what you're supposed to be doing. And to be honest, you guys, you know, the devil knows that he's going to lose in the end, right? Y'all know that, right? So anything he can get you off course, anything that he can get God's children to um, bow to him or, you know what I'm saying, get get to going, <laughs> that's, that's kind of ebonics, get to a place where you're off course, you get distracted, and he's trying to take as many of people out as he can. And you should not even let him get you in that position where if he's going to H E double L, you going with him, the devil is a liar. That is not an option. Okay. So just be alertful, be, be alert and be mindful. It's a distraction. Okay. And he's just getting you off focus. Now he says, if you are, are in a funk or you don't know what place you're going to or which, what you should be doing, you ask the direction question, which way should I be moving or which way should I be going? Then the second thing he says um, is alignment. Um, how do I align my values and principles with my beliefs, with the kingdom of God and with the word of God? Because things will, no, things will only flow if you are aligned And basically, are when they are in alignment, that's when things flow better. Then the next thing he was talking about is commitment and discipline. Whew, that's a tough one sometimes. Um, without commitment or discipline, you stay. You can't stay the course. So you should ask your the question: Am I willing to pay the price? 
Am I willing to pay the price to get this business up and going? Am I willing to pay the price to um, get everything right with my credit and everything to get a new house? Whatever your um, desire is or your big goal is, you have to be committed to it and you have to be disciplined in it as well. He says, a significant cause of suffering or disillusionment is, is ignoring what you know is right. Then he did reference Proverbs chapter 28, verse 4. And I think this was in the NIV version. And it says, those who turn their backs on what they know is right will no longer be able to tell right from wrong. But those who love the truth strengthens their soul. And then he kind of mentioned, well, that's what's wrong with the world today because when we all know things are right in the world and society tells you it's wrong, but you know the word of God, if the word of God says wrong, you guys, it's wrong, okay? So we cannot go around um, thinking something is right and the, and the principles and the word of God says it's wrong. Y'all, God don't change his word. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And if it's right, it's right. So... You know, you can't change his word to your to better your situation or make yourself right. Just admit it, Lord, I did wrong, okay, and I found something wrong. Repent and um, move on and do better. And he says, in the midst of your suffering, when you can't fix the situation, fix your focus. Fix your focus on what you was, you're supposed to be doing. Focus on God and he will definitely give you direction. And then once he gives you direction, you come in alignment with his word. Be committed, have discipline, and you'll be good to go. And then he also says, if you focus on your hurt, you will continue to suffer. If you focus on, your, on the lesson, you will continue to grow. Focus on your hope, have a hope strategy. And my favorite verse, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Everything's going to work in your favor. You just got to stay focused, you guys. We got to have direction. We got to have alignment. And we got to have discipline and commitment. Now, if you want your business to grow, be committed to it. If whatever you're doing, if you want to go back to school and whatever, whatever it is, you guys, you've got to be disciplined and commit and committed because in life, nobody's going to give you anything. Some, everything we have to earn. OK. And sometimes it's better when you earn it yourself, because if somebody gives you something, you won't value it like you would when you earn it yourself. Say, for instance, you buying a new car, if somebody buying you a car, um, you're not going to treat it um like you would if you had to pay that car note by your, uh, your, for yourself each month. Oh, you're going to treasure that thing. It's like, you know, you're going to wash it. You're going to make sure the oil changed. You got new tires. But if somebody's going to give you something, you know, I don't know. I think this gen the generation now, let's just go there. They, they're entitled and spoiled. And they probably need to go back to the old school ways and, um, you know, learn to take value things. But even some older people do the same thing, I guess. But, you know, we just need to do better. Bottom line, have direction. Get align yourself with the word of God. Stay focused on your goals and dreams. And be consistent. And also discipline yourself. Be consistent in your baskets. If you just got to practice each day on doing your bows, or you just practice on um, putting colors together in... A, in your baskets be consistent about it i mean i'm not saying you have to do a basket every day i mean even though some of us have goals to do that but whatever your goal is be consistent with you know sometimes we don't feel like do a lot of times i don't feel like doing some things i put off but if i put it off too long it's going to pile up and you can only grow and get better you guys if you just you know just just discipline yourself okay and I promise you guys, if you, you'll see some changes, you know, if God see you doing the natural, here we go, Eileen. If God see him, you doing the natural, he's going to swoop in and do the super. So, you know, we still got to do our part. We can't wait for somebody else to give us and do things for us. Uh, for us. It ain't like it used to back in the day. Times have changed. Okay. 
And you just can't count. Some you sometimes you just can't count on folks, but you can count on yourself. Okay, don't don't give up on yourself. Don't count yourself out, because once you do that, then it's all over, and you don't never want to give up on yourself. Okay, people will give up on you. People will let you down on a daily basis, but you cannot give up on yourself. Okay, we're gonna do direction. We're gonna ask God for direction. If you don't know where you're going, ask Him for direction. Once you get that direction, be aligned in his word, in his principles. Then also you need to stay focused on what you need to be doing and be consistent, discipline yourself. And I promise you, things are going to be looking better, okay? So this is the finished product, you guys, here. Um, I'm hoping I did justice to the, my subscribers who asked me to make this for her. Um just going to give you some ideas to things to put in your gift in a gift basket. Um, price this, you guys. I'm going to put this out on for Mother's Day as well. It might be a birthday gift some for somebody or maybe a co-worker. And then again, I might uh, uh, post it and see about administrative assistance day. This might be something that administrative um, a boss can buy for his uh, or her um, administrative assistant. But you guys, thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, comment. I hope you all have learned something. I know I did, I spoke a lot, but if you ever get a chance to listen to, uh, Dr. Dale Bronner, excuse me, Bishop Dale Bronner, um, his message was, was God delivers and God does deliver. But again, you guys remember, we got to do our part and let God do the supernatural as long as we're doing the natural till the next video. Send me a price. You guys, to the next video, you guys be blessed. Bye-bye.